Okay, we are recording. Yo, 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 what is good, everybody? It is the godfather of VR, the ageless one of the man, Lincoln Clay, coming back at you with a KSI versus Logan Paul post-fight video. So, I did watch the fight, but I am a little bit embarrassed to admit that I did not see the fight live. Uh, I fell asleep, and I woke up, and um, when I woke up, I had received a message from Titanfall Princess pretty much letting me know that KSI had won the fight. And so I was searching desperately to try to find anyone who had like uploaded a replay of the fight. And I did uh, find a, uh, actually I think there was a YouTuber, I'm not gonna mention his name, but there was a YouTuber that actually uh, streamed the replay of the fight. He streamed it live, but he was re replaying, um, showing a replay of the fight. And he showed the fight like three times, and that was actually great because I was actually able to um, break this fight down to the molecule. And so um, I do think KSI won the fight. Um, as far as uh, both fighters go, both of them showed signs of uh, having potential, but both of them showed signs of being amateurs. And... Um, So before I get into, uh, before I break this fight down, I do want to mention that um, I will be on the Titanfall Princesses podcast live at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time. You know, when uh, we'll, I'll talk to her, you know, we'll talk about this fight. You know, I would love nothing better than to do this live on my own channel uh, so I can interact with the crowd, with the viewers. But, uh, but I'll go ahead and... Uh, give you this uh, video so I'll, I'll break down you know I already told you that I think KSI won the fight um, I'll break down what I think happened round by round uh, afterwards um, I think I'll talk about whether this could be the new trend or not uh, youtubers being involved in pay-per-view pay-per-view fights um, you know I got some thoughts on that but uh so let me let me start with the scorecards uh in boxing they have a scoring system most states use what is called the 10 point must system where the winner uh whoever's declared the winner of the round gets 10 points and the loser gets nine now, if there's the if there uh, if there's a knockdown, now um, I, I guess to put it in uh, simpler terms, if there's a knockdown, it's basically like saying the the fighter that got knocked down gets a point deducted. So, so. Now, when there's, you know, now when there's multiple knockdowns or, or the fight was going some way, going a certain way, and a knockdown, you know, sent the fight in another direction, uh, that's where the, uh, the scoring system can get a little bit sketchy. So, for instance, um, to put it in simpler terms, uh, if a fighter is winning a round, he's on course to score a 10-9 round. Now, if he ends up knocking his opponent's his opponent down now his opponent was going to get nine points for losing the round and then basically gets another point taken away from him for getting knocked down so that's going to make it a 10-8 round now where i think the scoring can get a little bit sketchy is uh let's say a fighter uh is winning a round let's say i have person a winning the round but person B knocks him down, but person A gets up and um, basically finishes out the round. Now, that's where things can get sketchy because I had person A winning the round, but because he was knocked down, that takes a point from him automatically. So 
I think depending on how the scoring system works, the scoring will either be even because person B was losing the round. He basically lost the round with the exception of the knockdown. Depending on how the how the rules go, that could make the round even. That could make it a 9-9 nine, nine round. So, but in the event of multiple knockdowns, the easier way to put it is each time you get knocked down, you're going to lose a point. So how many points you lose, I think, depends on whether you won the round or not. So the fourth round was a very interesting round. So I had to point that out. Uh, one second, because I'm definitely thirsty. So at the time of uh, recording this video, it's about uh, 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So, after watching the fight two or three times, I had made out my own scorecard. So, <clears throat> so the, the first round, um, I scored that even. So, I, that made it a 10-10 round because, uh, to me, the first round, nobody really established themselves that first round. Um, I think they were kind of filling each other out the first round. Both of them were throwing a lot of jabs. And I think they were trying to fill each other out the first round. So um, so uh, I scored the first round even, which is actually pretty common in boxing, for fighters to basically use the first round to, to fill each other out. And so I scored the first round even, 10-10 apiece. Um, the second round, I scored that second round for uh, KSI. I thought he threw more punches. I thought he was uh, a little more aggressive. So I scored, so that round was a 10-9 round uh, in favor of KSI. Third round, um, the third round was an interesting one because um, no question... Uh, KSI won that round. So, score that round 10-9 for KSI. But what made that interesting is that um, KSI caught Logan Paul right behind the ear. And he went down, but the judge, uh, the, the referee, scored it a slip. And then when, I, uh, when they showed the replay, it was clearly a knockdown. He caught it behind the head and uh, Logan Paul went down. So... Um, you know, that could have been a 10-8 round uh, for KSI if the referee would have scored that a knockdown, but he didn't. But nonetheless, uh, KSI did win that. I, I thought he won the third round. Now, the fourth round is um, everything that transpired in the fourth round. Um, I think that was the difference maker right there, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, in the fourth round, I would say I would like to give that round to KSI because he was the more aggressive. He was the more aggressive fighter, and uh, Logan Paul was actually looking tired. And um, but Logan Paul caught KSI with an uppercut, and it was a beautiful uppercut. I'm not gonna lie about that one. He he caught. KSI with a Mike Tyson uppercut and um, KSI was going to go down and um, but uh, Logan Paul also uh, grabbed KSI behind the head and gave him another uppercut the the ref didn't see that which um, but even if the ref would have seen it I don't think you know the the most that probably would have happened was that the ref would have gave Logan and Paul a warning not to grab behind the head so I, you know, I can't really factor that in too much, but it looked like KSI was going to go down, well, which he did. After Logan Paul uh, grabbed him behind the head and gave him another uppercut, um, he kind of, KSI was on his way down, but Logan Paul helped him go to the ground even faster by pulling him down. And when KSI was on the ground, Logan Paul hit him when he was on the ground. That was a crucial mistake right there. So the ref... Uh, he 
he called for timeout, and he went to the judges, and he awarded Logan Paul the knockdown, but then he turned around and took two points for him for hitting KSI while he was on the ground. So that right there was huge. So I put it this way. Um, if you just if you just factor in the knockdown and you take out the fact that Logan Paul hit him when he was on the ground, the scoring would have went like this in my eyes. Um, all in all, I think KSI won that round. He was the more aggressor. Um, he was uh, throwing more punches. And Logan Paul was doing a lot of, you know, a lot of backing up. And he wasn't throwing a tremendous amount of punches. He was just trying to, you know, stay out of the way of that right hand. So I would have gave that round to KSI. It would have been a, so you, you scratched the knockdown. And it, to me, it would have been a 10-9 round for KSI. But, um, so I, I, I had KSI winning that round, even though he got knocked down. Now, this is where the scoring gets a little bit murky. This is where I don't know the exact ins and outs of how scoring works in that situation. But if I treat it like, okay, the um, a knockdown is just a point taken away and it doesn't determine who won the round, if you put it that way, KSI won the round. So that would have made it a 10-9 um, a round. But because KSI got knocked down, then that would have made it a 9-9 round in favor of a... Well, it would have made it a 9-9 round, and it would have made it even. But because Logan Paul got two points taken away, now that makes it... I think that makes it a um, a 9... I think that makes it a 9-7 round. So I actually got to go back... I actually got to go back and correct that. Because I had that round even at 8-8. Because... Again, depending on how, uh, depending on how you scored, you know, because again, I'm not 100% certain of the rules. Uh, there may be a possibility that okay, let's say Logan Paul was clearly losing that round, but because he knocked KSI down, that could have totally flipped the score and made it a 10-8 round in favor of Logan Paul, and that's one of the ways that I was looking at it. But because he got deducted two points for the knockdown. That would have, you know, that would have made it eight eight, if you look at it from one perspective, and that's why I had that fourth round scored even at eight eight. But again, if you flip it the other way, where um, a person that uh, scored a knockdown is not automatically declared the winner, it is just scored a knockdown. If you do it that way, then KSI still won that round nine to seven because. You take away, he won the round 10-9 if you look at it that way. But because he got knocked down, that made the score even at 9 apiece. But because uh, Logan Paul got deducted two points, that made the round, that made the score 9-7 in, um, in favor of KSI. Uh, the fifth round, I gave that round to, uh, to Logan Paul because... Uh, KSI looked like he was still hurt from the knockdown and he looked like he was tired and he wasn't throwing as many punches and actually Logan Paul was actually being a little bit more aggressive so I gave uh, Logan Paul uh, round 5 and scored that 10-9 and then the final round I gave that to KSI because once because now KSI was back to being the aggressor uh, he was back to throwing more punches and um, and you know, going after Paul. So I gave um, KSI the, the sixth and final round. Now, so I'll just, uh, you know, the fourth round, I'm not going to get back into that. But based on the way I scored the fight, you know, here was, here was my scorecard right here. Let me pull that back a little bit. So I had the fight um, 57 to 55 in favor of KSI. So let 
now I, I now let me get into the part of uh, what I feel the fighters did right and what they did wrong. I think in the case of um, KSI, um, well, let me back up for a second. Uh, in my last video, I did mention that um, that I did talk to my uncle Jeff Mayweather uh, for a little bit on Facebook. And he sent me a message, you know, and said that if KSI catches Logan Paul clean, the fight's over. You know, he's getting knocked out. Because I guess KSI has got some power in that right hand. So that told me right out the gate that KSI was going to be, he was going to be the aggressor. He was going to be the one um, trying to push the fight. And so, uh... Logan Paul, I didn't really know what his game plan was going to be. Um, when I found out that Shannon Briggs was in the corner of um, of Logan Paul, I kind of didn't know what the game plan was going to be. But I think when um, I didn't see the entire video, but I guess during the during the press conference, some words got exchanged, and I think. Um, Shannon Briggs had pretty much alluded to that um, Logan Paul was going to be using the Mayweather shoulder roll on defense where one hand is here and the shoulder is right there and it makes it hard for somebody to get a clean shot, especially you know when they're constantly uh, moving their head, which I don't think that would have been a, a bad strategy. But so, so, but one thing, you know, I, I, I pretty much took it the KSI was going to be the aggressor fight so what I think KSI did wrong um, is I think he was telegraphing that right hand I think he made it obvious every time he got ready to throw that right hand um, I think one of the things that he was doing was um he was trying to sit on that right hand and in boxing, when they say sit on your hand, sit on your punches, that basically means they planted their feet, squatted, and basically tried to use their whole body to generate power um, through that one punch. So KSI was trying to do that, but he was throwing that overhand right. He made it so obvious when he was getting ready to throw it. And to me... Um, the punch that does the most damage in boxing is the punch that your opponent never sees coming. So, um, I think it was hard for him to land a clean, that overhand right. He couldn't really land it clean because he, he made it obvious when he was getting ready to throw it. So, um, now some people thought KSI was wild. I will say that, you know, hey, when your opponent doesn't participate in what you're trying to do, I mean, Logan Paul obviously wasn't going to sit there and let KSI take his head off. So, to me, that, um, that kind of destroys your balance when you're trying to sit on your punches um, and, and plant your feet to try to take a guy's head off, but when you go to throw that punch, he's backing up. You know, so um, so I think KSI tried to make the adjustment. He was still throwing that wild right hand, but now he was throwing that punch on the run. He was throwing that punch as he was coming forward, whereas first, in the beginning, um, he was trying to set on his punches. So I think... I think that was the big thing right there. He made that obvious uh, when he was getting ready to throw that right hand. So I, I think um, as far as him being the aggressor, I think that was the biggest thing right there. If he could have found a way to conceal that right hand and Logan Paul never seeing that right hand coming, then he probably could have knocked Logan Paul out. Uh, because um, KSI, actually, I think he hurt Logan Paul in the... Um, third round because he he actually caught um, Logan Paul with a couple of left hooks that Logan Paul didn't see coming 
Um, I think Logan Paul was so busy looking for that right hand that he actually got caught by the left hook a couple of times. So I think that was one adjustment that um, KSI could have made. He could have kept, you know, he could have, like, faded with the right hand like he was going to throw it, but then actually come with the left. If he would have kept doing something like that, he probably could have knocked Logan Paul out. So I, I think that was the um, I think that was the biggest mistake right there that uh KSI was making was that he was telegraphing that right hand because he was every time he threw that right hand, he was trying to take Logan Paul's head off. I think another thing that um KSI probably could have done was go to the body because by the third round, Logan Paul looked gassed. Um, so I think if, with that being said, if KSI would have went to his body right from the start, um, he, you know, Logan Paul probably, he probably could have even knocked Logan Paul out with a body shot if he would have went straight to the body uh, right from the get-go. But it was like every time KSI threw that right hand, he was trying to take Logan Paul's head off with it, and he made it obvious. So... Uh, I think KSI wasted a lot of energy um, and wasted a lot of punches making it obvious when he was going to throw that right hand. Ooh. I might end up having to get, get up and get a drink, so please excuse me if I have to get up and go to the fridge for a second. Um, so now let's flip the script on the other hand. Um... Truthfully, on paper, this fight should have favored Logan Paul. Uh, he was the taller fighter uh, with a longer reach. And I think, you know, not I think, I know. In boxing, there is a term that's called, that's called make him miss and make him pay. So Logan Paul did make KSI miss, but he did not make him pay. Every time um, KSI missed with that wild ass right hand, Logan Paul should have countered him. He, you know, if he would have done that, one of two things could have happened. He could have eventually knocked KSI out from um, KSI running into so many counter um, um, counter punches, or when KSI realized he was getting caught, he probably would have stopped coming in so aggressive with that right hand, and then um, Logan Paul could have established his offense. So I think, um, now on the plus side, I do think that uh, Logan Paul did a decent job of uh, jabbing at times, using his jab at times. And uh, for the most part, I think Logan Paul actually showed decent footwork because I give him credit. He did a, he did a decent job of staying out of the way of uh, KSI's right hand. I, th I think he did a decent job of that, but he did not make KSI pay for the misses. With those long-ass arms and that height, and with Logan Paul fighting backwards the way he did, KSI should have been doing nothing but running into lefts and rights. But uh, Logan Paul would, you know, throw a jab or, or two, and then as soon as he saw... KSI getting ready to make a move to throw that right hand. He backed up and stepped out of the way. Now, I think um, again, to me, he should have done a few things. He he could have ducked, countered him. Uh, he could have kept doing what he was doing, was stepping back, stepping out of the way of the punches, and as soon as he steps back, come in with a counter punch. Or he could have stepped to um, KSI's left because that would have took some of the steam off the punch, even if it would have caught him. He, you know, those are called angle punches. He could have stepped to KSI's left and countered him that way too. So, um, to me, on paper, that fight favored Logan because of his height and his reach. But again, he didn't. Um, you know, he did, a, he did a decent job of footwork, but in my opinion, he did not make KSI pay for missing. So, now, um, moving forward with these kind of events, it looked to me like this thing was a big, big success. Um, myself... 
I think if they want to move forward and keep doing this kind of stuff and having big YouTubers putting on pay-per-view fights, um, I think the only way... Well, they're already going to stir up the interest of their own followers. But I think to get more people involved, um, they need to do what they did this fight and have legitimate fighters in the corners of the fighters. So truth be, ta truth be told, I, I didn't even know until a few days ago that KSI and, and, um, and Logan Paul actually had a first fight. And I wasn't even interested in this fight until I found out my Uncle Jeff was training KSI. And then when I found out that Shannon Briggs was uh, training Logan Paul, that made it all the more interesting because you had two legitimate fighters um, with backgrounds. You know, you, you had my Uncle Jeff Mayweather, who um, now in one of my previous videos, I had Jeff's uh, fight record wrong. I had to Google it to be certain, but he Jeff finished with a record of uh, 32 wins, 10 losses, and, and 5 draws. He uh, won the IBO, I thought it was the IBU, he won the IBO Junior Lightweight Championship. So Jeff is a former champion. Um, Shannon Briggs, I don't know what his uh, heavyweight record is, but um, I know for a minute he was one of the biggest names in the heavyweight division when he was in his prime. And he's a two-time world champion. So um, both fighters had legitimate had legitimate people training them. So I think that's the only way that these events can continue to be successful. Because um, I bet you um, people would probably love to see a fight between PewDiePie and... And I can't remember the name of that other YouTuber that he was competing against to try to get the most um, subscribers on YouTube. Um, I bet you people would love to see them two get in the ring for real. But even if something like that could happen, I would not be interested in seeing the fight unless both of them had legitimate trainers in the corner. So, so if they continue with that formula, I think this can, you know, I think it'll, it'll at least be a trend. It'll... It'll be something that'll last for a few years, uh, but I don't think this is, I don't think this in any way, shape, or form is the future of boxing because uh, one thing about uh, two YouTubers coming into a fight for the first time and you don't know anything about their background, whether they got any kind of fighting, um, uh, any kind of um, fighting on their resume, you don't know who's going to win. But because there was a first fight, between Logan Paul and KSI, people were able to somewhat gauge what was going to happen in the second fight based on the first fight. Because one thing was obvious from the first fight that um, KSI likes to throw that overhand right, you know. And um, myself, I honestly thought that KSI was, you know, was going to learn from that. And I thought he was going to do a better job of concealing that right hand <clears throat> this fight, you know, if you can't conceal it, set it up. So I think, um, which he was trying to do, I, I give him that. He was using the jab to try to set the right hand up. But Logan Paul saw those right hands coming and he was getting out of the way. So I think uh, KSI needed to make an adjustment. You know, as soon as he caught um, Logan Paul with those two left hooks that, that hurt him, um, that right there, like, you know, I think that was a good time for him to make an adjustment and try to establish the left hook and get Logan Paul worried about the left hook. Then he could come back and catch him with the right when uh, Logan Paul don't see it coming. So, but I thought, all in all, I think it was an um, a entertaining fight. At times... It had the look of um, it had the looks of a legitimate boxing match. At times, it was super sloppy. Um, at times, it looked amateurish. And um, but yeah, I thought I, I thought it was entertaining. So uh, that's uh, I think that's pretty much all I got. Uh, there's nothing else I can really think of at the moment. But I think. Um, 
Oh, I, I think the one thing that I did mention, forgot to mention, is if I go back to the fourth round, if Logan Paul had not hit KSI when he was when he was on the ground, um, when he knocked him down, if Logan Paul had not uh, hit him while he was on the ground, the referee would have um, given KSI the standard eight count, and then he would have let the fight continue. And then Logan Paul could have, like, really moved in for the kill while KSI was still hurt. Because, like, KSI was clearly hurt. And I mean hurt bad. But because Logan Paul hit him while he was on the ground, the ref gave KSI, like, three or four minutes to get his marbles back. So I think if Logan Paul hadn't hit him on the ground, he would have got an eight count instead of getting three or four minutes to recover. And Logan Paul might have been able to move in and finish him off. But that was a... Uh, a big mental mistake hitting a man while he was on the ground because, um, you know, rabbit punches and hitting someone while they're on the ground are two infractions in boxing that would get, you know, get a point taken away quick, sometimes without a warning. So, I think, um, Again, moving forward, can stuff like this be successful? I think, yeah, if you use uh, big-name YouTubers and they have legitimate fighters or trainers in their corners um, to add to the to um, to add to the strategic look of the fight, yeah. But this isn't something that I would be paying fifty dollars pay-per-view every other week or something like that and this isn't something that I wouldn't come in there trying to be Jim Lampley off of you, YouTube fights and try to break down why this person's going to win, why this person's going to win you know, boxing is in my blood you know, and I do watch legitimate fights um, you know, and most times when there's a big championship fight coming up, I can usually I think I can usually make a decent a decent prediction because I have a background on both fighters. So, uh, but I think that's I think that's now nah, I think that's gonna do it for me. Um, there's nothing else I can think of. Uh, so just a reminder, just a couple of reminders to catch me at 11 a.m. Eastern as I will be on uh, Titanfall Princesses uh, podcast live uh, to talk about this fight. So. Um, you know, hey, you know, then you can add, you guys can ask me some questions there, but, um, but I have to warn everybody that I will not answer any troll type questions. So, and then uh, I also want to remind everybody uh, to tune in to Gamer Tag VR's channel. I think at 2 p.m. Eastern, where we uh, do the VR link every Sunday, where we uh, go over the past week. In, uh, in in VR so that's going to do it for me that's all I got uh, thanks for watching like comment subscribe all that good stuff uh, to my uncle Jeff Mayweather uh, congratulations on KSI getting the win and um, that's going to do it for me I will holler at everybody later deuces